There are too many fantastic stories out there to be able to crown one a king. But when it comes to adult fantasy, Guy Gabriel K is absolutely a prince. Today, I'm talking about Tagana. This is the first book of his that I've read. Well, 50 plus percent of you have read with Tagana, and thank you for the recommendation. This is a book, for the first time perhaps, where I really felt like it was an adult fantasy. You may be thinking, oh, we must be talking about gritty, grim, dark, right? Maybe Game of Thrones-esque or Joe Abercrombie-esque. And there is some overlap in that both of those authors have made are fantastic writers with fantastic prose, but the dark nature doesn't really show up in the same way with Kay's work. But if it's not grim, dark, or gritty, then what makes it feel like an adult fantasy? Let's start with our main characters. We get Alasan, who is a more grizzled exile who has been 20 years on the run from their own country. E even though Alison has a more stoic nature that is world-weary, as the reader, I felt older than him. I felt almost as though I was like the mother bird, watching these little chicks, waiting for them to fall out of the nest. And this is done by Kay's fantastic control of the narrative. So often in those tense moments of action, of the forks in the road, of the will they or won't they succeed, Kay would shift the camera often to the future where that character can reflect back on that tense pivotal moment and think about what could have been on the road less traveled. This is a common approach for a third person omniscient narrator. Little did they know character would XYZ. Kay uses it sparingly enough to increase that tension moment by holding you in suspense because you didn't know the finale. And speaking of control over the moment, Kay is a sculptor with words. He is a surgeon at adding and removing and trimming exactly what he wants to say to both evoke emotion, place you in the scene, and yet be understated. I was so impressed with how many times the non-description and the character's non-dialogue was informing how they were feeling. And that really brings us to the whole plot of this book. In Tagana, we are in a quasi-Renaissance Italy, where warring kingdoms and factions are fighting for control over a territory called the Palm. You see, 20 years before this book started, one king lays waste to an entire city of people. And using his magic, he removes the names and memories of the people as well. It would be easy to imagine we focus on the deaths and the pure destruction of the people at that time, but Kay wants to focus on a different aspect. The city's memories are wiped away from the world, that their name is literally forgotten and unhearable. That salting of the earth is the destruction of an entire culture. It's genocide. One aspect that Kay is addressing through this work is the question, is history determined by large-scale forces, or is it made up by mere individuals? And to this complicated question, his answer is a clear cut, yes. Often for fantasy, you will get a lot of good versus evil kind of story. In fact, Kay's introduction to fantasy was working with Tolkien's work on Cimmerillion. So he is well versed in that approach to stories. Lord of the Rings is not necessarily known for its nuance of character. However, with Tagana, even our heroes would say that the ends justify the means as they are on a vendetta, and we get a bittersweet ending. You see what the characters cannot. You can see the connections that were never made. And in a beautiful moment, one character hides part of the history to prevent further heartache. It's a reversal in memory. It's the white lie to the black lie. And that decision in this story is all about that. We even spend time with our so-called villain of the story, and we realize that he, too, is just a man. He's not a good guy, but you can understand him. I have two main criticisms about this book, and the first is with one of our characters, Dianora. I think her role was an important one for humanizing our villain. However, she lacked depth herself. She is caught between two goals, and that will-they-won't-they they nature to her it gets a little repetitive for 600 pages. This one might be strange, but it felt like the sex scenes were too much in service of the plot. And I know that's opposite to what you often hear people talk about, but 
it felt like every emotional catharsis was always then accompanied with all the different couples pairing off immediately. And the third, fourth, fifth time that happens, it just feels strange. And remember, this came out in 1990. Kay is clearly an inspiration for later authors, such as Patrick Rothfuss. There are scenes in this that feel exactly could be transplanted into the name of the wind. And some of them may have been the weird parts, like with Flurry. If you know, you know. And I have to say, I'm going to have to read every single book he's ever written from now on. I'm always looking for another recommendation. So, if there are other books or other authors you want me to check out, well, leave it down below.